Hi everyone, today I'm going to describe to you as simply as possible how the fast Fourier transform works. Now I expect that you have either seen my discrete Fourier transform video already or are just familiar with the discrete Fourier transform. The fast Fourier transform F, or FFT is really a quick, smart way to do the DFT. A note in syntax, in my last video I used X sub K to refer to a frequency bin but over here I used capital F sub K because I feel F is a more apt syntax to describe a frequency bin and it also distinguishes it from X which I use for samples. So I have in front of you the equation for the discrete Fourier transform. If you have n samples, say 100 samples of a signal, you're going to end up with 100 frequency bins. And likewise, with each frequency bin, you're going to have to calculate a sum of 100 different values. So what you end up with is n squared number of operations for this complexity. If you have just one sample, uh, you're just going to get one operation. If you have two samples, you're going to calculate two frequency bins with two, su two values summed together in each one for four operations. And with three samples, you're going to get three frequency bins with three in each for nine. So the complexity, like I said, is n squared. If we, for instance, want to do something reasonable like a <clears throat> chart 0 to 20,000 hertz with 1 hertz spacing, that's going to end up with 400 million operations. And say you can do one operation a minute, that'll end up, you'll end up with 760 years in order to compute that. However, if we can change that complexity to an n log 2 n complexity, for the same problem, we're going to end up with only 28,600 operations. And as a result, only 198 days, as opposed to the 760 years that we would otherwise. The trick to speeding up the DFT is to take advantage of the periodic nature of sinusoids. We can first divide up the DFT into an even index summation and an odd index summation, where the subscripts for the even index sum sample is 2m and for the odd index sample is 2m plus 1. So now we have a DFT as a sum of two smaller summations each half the size of the original. Let's move the 2 in the numerator to the denominator for both the even and the odd index, and we can simplify the odd index term by distributing out a constant which we can move to the front of the summation shown in green. And we can call this constant C sub k. And now you noticed that the exponential terms in both the even and odd index summations look identical. There's something tricky about this particular exponential. If we expand using Euler's formula into cosine and sine terms, you'll note that k runs from 0 to n, which is the total number of sam samples that we have. Take a look at what happens when the value of k is larger than n over 2. If we define r as r equals k minus n over 2, and r runs from 1 to n over 2, we can distribute the numerator, divide out the n over 2, and we can find that there is a negative 2 pi term in the operand of the cosine. Now, every time that you add a multiple of 2 pi to the operand of the cosine, you end up with simply the cosine function without the 2 pi multiple. So every time your k value is larger than n over 2, it's simply a repeat of the k value minus n over 2. This is what is called a symmetry identity, and it can be noted in the cosine, sine, and as a result the exponential terms. Because k runs from 0 to n, everything repeats after k equals n over 2, and the total number of operations is effectively halved. We can repeat this process and divide each of these even and odd index summations into their own even and odd index summations. Every time you split the summation, you are having the number of operations to calculate the DFT. Let's look at an extremely exam simple example. Say we are sampling a 1 hertz sine wave with an amplitude of 1. If our sampling frequency is 4 hertz and the number of samples we take 
is 4, we can get the following values if we sample at the right time. We start off with our DFT equation, which we split into the even and odd segments. This split makes the range go from 0 to n over 2 minus 1. Since we have four samples, we are running from m, e m equals 0 to, to m equals 1. We can split one more time so that the summation runs from 0 to 0, resulting in just one sample. Because the summations are over one term and are equal to 0, the exponential terms within each summation drops to 1. Thus, the white outline portions refer each to just one sample point. We can begin calculating the zeroth frequency bin. Because k equals 0, all the exponential terms in green simply equal 1, so the zero frequency bin is always just the sum of all the samples. Here, the sum equals 0. I'm going to call the even portion of the equation f sub 0 e for even and f sub 0 o for odd. This will be used later when you use the symmetry relation in the first tier of the split. Now let's try to calculate the first frequency bin. Now the exponential terms have a value other than 1, so we must include them in the equation. Of course, you would use Euler's formula to convert the exponential terms into complex sines and cosines, which we can get values from. Also, don't forget that the, the exponential term that you have to multiply by the entire sum in the first tier split. By doing this sum, we get negative 2j. We're going to say the intermediate summations here also, remembering not to include the exponential term from the first tier split. Like I mentioned before, the symmetry relation exists due to the sinusoidal exponential term, which results in the sum simply becoming a repeat for all k larger than n over 2. From the previous steps, I've recorded the even and odd sums, and now all we have to do is simply reuse them again when we calculate f sub 2 and f sub 3. As a result, f sub 2 is simply equal to the sum of the even and odd summations of f sub 0. Similarly, f sub 3 is simply equal to the sum of the even and odd summations of f sub 1. The extra exponential term in green is going to change depending on what k value we have. So that's the only distinguishing factor between the first half and the second half of the frequency bins. Once we calculate that, we can sum everything together and, and we've completed all the frequency bins F0 through F3. This is exactly what we expect because we have a 1 hertz sine wave and we get a value in the first frequency bin of negative 2j which once added, once added together equals 4j and equals an amplitude of 1 once averaged. Check out my DFT video if that doesn't make sense to you. I will now go over a recursive method to program the FFT algorithm. This is not the most space or speed efficient way to program the FFT, but it's the easiest way to put together one that works. The function will recursively split the samples all the way until we have only one sample left and then work backwards through each level, combining the values until we arrive at our frequency bins. Here I've used C++ to write out the algorithm, but using something like Python will be much simpler, as you don't have to declare variables. First, we need to declare the FFT function, which outputs a complex vector, and also takes a complex vector as an input. Here I'm passing the vector called samples, which contains all the samples which I had earlier denoted as x. First we find n, which is the number of samples that we have in our vector array. Then we write the condition which executes when all the recursive even and odd splits reduces the sample set to a single sample. If we are not yet at a single sample, we split the samples again into even and odd arrays. We place these even samples into an even array and the odd samples into an odd array. Then we recursively run all the above lines until we end up with just one sample. Now that we're done with the recursion, we begin combining the values at each level, remembering to multiply by the green exponential. Here we take advantage of the symmetry relation so that all frequency bins larger than n over 2 
we simply use the same value but make an adjustment using the complex exponential. And the result is you get all the frequency bins.